Hi, my name is Jana Kay and welcome to my channel, Flourish Faith and Fiber. Welcome in, I hope you are doing well and it is great to have you join me in this crazy life of moving overseas. Creatively podcast number 22. So it's great to have you all here. Thanks for joining me for this video. And um, yeah, I hope that it is an encouragement in your crafting journey and a blessing to you as you walk with the Lord. Uh, so I would appreciate if you do enjoy this video, giving it a thumbs up. If you are new, I hope that you do enjoy, consider subscribing if so. And as I said, welcome in. Welcome to my new subscribers and my uh, continual, continuing faithful subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. As you can see, we're in the middle of moving overseas. Our company uh, provides uh, packing and crating for us, uh, to a limited amount. Um, but we are definitely meeting that limit and really appreciate that they are getting us and the things that we have collected that we cherish, uh, back over to the U S. Um, and it will also help us as we settle there and, that we don't have to buy a lot of things, mostly furniture. We are only taking um, three, three pieces of furniture and two shelves. One's a really skinny bookshelf. The other is um, regular size bookshelf. And that's pretty much it other than books, clothes, yarn, and uh, kitchen things, blankets, that kind of, that kind of those little things, but every little bit helps as we prepare to set up home in the U.S. in a few weeks. It's really crazy. We leave here in a week and a half. We will be visiting family and staying with them for a few more weeks before we actually uh, settle where we're going to be living. So, um, yeah, so we are busy, but in all the busyness, I did get three things finished. So let's start out and talk about what those three finished objects are. All right, first is a completely finished project, and that is I did get my husband's pair of socks finished. They have been washed. I don't have blockers. Uh, we'll look into getting those when I get to the U.S. Just never got around to it while I was here in South Africa as I began making socks. But, um, yeah, so I am not sure because these have been washed, which is the one I finished recently. But there they are, his pair of finished Sock. So I'm going to go through all the specs with you um, and then call it done for his pair of socks. So uh, this is yarn from my yarn subscription, Yarnable subscription by Hypnotic Yarns. This colorway I do know came from January 2023 subscription box. And the colorway is called Bougie New Year. I love the striping effect on this colorway. It is so pretty. Um, so I, for my husband, well, for all socks, I knit on 2.5 millimeter, uh, nine inch circulars. I do use for the heel flap and heel turn, I use two DPNs. And then when I do the toe decreases, I use a, um, a magic loop. 
on. I use the Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla Sock Pattern, but I do a two by two ribbing. It is my favorite. For my husband, I do 25 rounds, then 60 rounds of stockinette, and then enough to make for his about size 11 US uh, foot. And I do the heel, heel flap and heel turn gusset. I do have a video on how I pick up the gusset stitches. I'll put that here so that there is no hole and you don't have to go back later and sew in the hole. It has worked for me in, yeah, every pair of socks that I have made. And so, yeah, so I'm excited. I will give this to him. We plan on doing an Alaskan or going on an Alaskan cruise. And so for those days that we have uh, adventures off the boat, we're doing some hiking. He can wear these and keep his feet warm in his boots. And so that is the first finished project. And I think that's it. I think I'd, oh, I do a 72 stitch cast on for his foot. All right. I think that's it for those. They are done, ready to go into his suitcase. So the other finished project, oh, let me get to the finished object. The reason I call it an object is because it's going to be a very long project. And that is that every time I finish a pair of socks, I make an eight round granny square and put it into a scrappy blanket. A blanket that I am making only with yarn that I have made socks with. Even if I decide like my Yarnable subscription to make a hat, I'm only going to document in the blanket uh, yarns that I have made socks with. So this was my sixth. I do have one pair of crochet socks for me. Um, two pair for my husband and then um, I think to pair for, for me, but I'll have to look. I just know I made the sixth square. And on the eighth row, I do um, join as I go. So I will put a video up. I have finished the object of my granny square out of this yarn and have added it in to the blanket. And I'll put that video here. So this is my granny square scrappy blanket. And that is the square that I just added from the sock I finished for my husband. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I may do it. It's right now it's six. I've made six pairs of socks. And so thinking that I will do uh, a seventh Add a seventh one in before I start going up and I'll probably snake and go just back and forth as I finish socks so seven pairs of socks uh, this uh, these two here and these two are the yarnable subscription these two um, were sock yarn might have been Shakamar can't remember the brand and this was one I got in the US that's a cotton wool blend that I made shorty socks with and I forgot what brand that was too but it was one that I had bought in the US so there you go the progress on my scrappy blanket with sock yarn the reason that I inserted the video is because that blanket is somewhere in one of these boxes and uh, so that is why uh, I did the video earlier as soon as they were done so I could pack that away so now uh, that is a finished project a finished object that will be more than a year-long project because I am not sure how many squares 
uh, it will take even to do one row, much less a whole entire blanket. So it could be two, three years down the road before that entire project's finished. But I also have another finished project. Last week, I talked about it as a finished object uh, because I had finished uh, the amigurumi in the pattern I was using. However, I have joined the hashtag mix and match challenge 2024 started by Cassandra at Craftably Ever After. And the idea is that drawings were turned in and voted on and the drawing that got the most votes those who are participating in the make-along are to make an amigurumi based on that drawing. And my, so a, a white cat in blue overalls or dungarees with a mushroom hat is the pat, or is the design, the drawing that won. And last week I had finished the cat and his hat. It came from the same pattern. And I will put a link to that video here because there are a lot more, um, there's a lot more information on the yarn that I used and everything uh, in that video on the cat. But he's now completely finished. Finished the entire mix and match challenge 2024 and ready to send my photos into Cassandra. Her kids are gonna vote on the winning Amigurumi. Uh, so this has been a really fun make along to join in with. So this is my cute finished cat. Now he was cute before completely finishing, but now with his overalls, his dungarees, the spots on his mushroom hat, a few additions, I love him and think he is so adorable. And uh, yeah, so I made, um, so the reason it's called Mix and Match Challenge is that you get patterns from different uh, amigurumi designs and put them into one project. So the cat with the hat was part of uh, a pattern from Amigurumi Today. I signed up, gave him my email address, and then I can get the patterns online. So you can't print them out. You have to read the patterns online. Well, I take that back. You can buy the PDF and print it out. But with signing up with your email, you get the pattern uh, in its entirety on the website and you can make it from there, which is what I did with this cat. And um, yeah, so uh, for the overalls, I uh, just looked on YouTube for how to make pants or trousers for Amigurumi and yeah, just kind of followed uh, followed that uh, tutorial online and just to get kind of the idea of what I was doing. I figured that uh, just like I did with the cat where you start with one leg, then you go to the other leg, but you join them with a chain of stitches and then continue working them together. Uh, I, I thought the pants would be the same way and sure enough they were so the pattern that I watched I don't remember what it is but if you google like I did uh, pants for amigurumi uh, you'll there's several videos the for one particular I know that they uh, she chained 20 but it wasn't big enough to go around his cute little toes so I ended up doing 28 stitches around and you can see I think where I had to do some decreases because once I joined the legs, then the entire circle of the pants was too big. And so, um, yeah, I just kept putting them on as I did the leg, just kept putting them on. Is that long enough? Now am I ready to join them together? And um, yeah, just kept trying it on him. 
and ended up, I probably decreased it a little too much. It fits snug, but I knew that his body, so he has a little bit of a tummy, but his body shape uh, is wider here, down here, and then it gets skinnier as it goes up. So I wanted to make sure that it fit nice, that it wasn't, you know, too, I mean, I know overalls stick out there. They're made to be big. Uh, but I didn't want it to be too big on him. And I think they're really cute. I think they turned out great. And then um, for his tail, I, as I said, I just kept putting them on. And when I got far enough up to meet his tail, then I chained, I think I chained about five and to make the hole for his tail. Then continued up till I thought they were up high enough for him and then I worked the bib part just back and forth single crochet for the straps I joined in the back and chained and you can see they cross over thanks to a tip from Cassandra uh, for keeping them on his shoulders they cross over and when they were when the chain was long enough to meet the bib then I half double crocheted all the way back and attached it to another stitch in the back of the um, the pants part and uh, so yeah so that's how I ended up making the uh, overalls the dungarees they were not other than getting started making the pants they were not a particular pattern and then I stopped off because I have packed up all my buttons so I stopped at my local yarn shop and picked out these really cute little heart buttons. I think they're great because they're red like the hat, but they've got blue in it to also go well with his overalls. And uh, yeah, really happy. I just used a needle thread, sewing needle thread, and sewed them on. Actually, I used my embroidery needle and thread because I am packing an embroidery, uh, my slow stitch sampler into my suitcase uh, to have the first three months while I'm waiting on all our boxes to get to the U.S. And so I use that embroidery needle because um, wrapped up in here is my sewing box. It doesn't close well, so I wrapped it up and wasn't about to unwrap it just to get needles out, but had that embroidery um, project that I had put aside, so use that needle. Uh, in there and use some of the cotton floss to sew the buttons on. Um, yeah, then I just made circles. So the way I did that is I made a magic, no, I, yeah, I made a magic ring. And then for the smaller circles, let me turn him around, these two back here, I did six single crochet. And then for the second row, did increases up to 12 single crochet. Then I have these medium-sized ones. I think there's one over here, too, that I did the single crochet. And then the second row, the increase row, was half double crochet. And then for the bigger ones, yeah, that's the bigger circle. There's a bigger one back here. I did two rounds of double crochet so one six double crochet and then the in increase round to 12 double crochet for all of those and then just sewed them on and then I was listening oh and I didn't show you let me go back and say I didn't show you that my cat last week my cat has ears there you go but his hat is a um, beanie and it covers his ears. It keeps him warm when he's out working in the garden in the winter time. So he does have ears and his cute little hat keeps, keeps those ears warm. So uh, I was watching, and that's what reminded me, I was watching Pamela, my friend Pamela, at Ginger Cat Crochets, and she was talking about how she veered off the design the drawing that won because her mushroom hat the ears did not pop through as they did in the design in the drawing and um, I got to thinking wow um, I veered off the pattern as well I think her overalls are not denim they're 
a teal kind of color. And, um, and I'll link her uh, video and um, her YouTube channel in the description box below. But I got to thinking that, you know, we're creative people. And it's very hard to keep creatives in line uh, and keep them in a box, so to say, and, and keep us from veering off the pattern a little and using our creativity, our, the things that we love uh, in the pattern. So she was saying she really doesn't like denim. She doesn't like blue jeans and so she made hers out of a teal color yarn well I love butterflies and so I had to add a cute little butterfly to his hat because if he's working out in the garden with a mushroom hat you know it is going to attract butterflies and so the butterfly I made is from the uh, a whip project that I'll get to, but it is a sock that I'm finishing up for myself. So it is wool, um, but it was pretty and pink and I had to put its fingering weight. So I knew it would make a tiny butterfly. So I had to make one and put on his hat. I will link the video to this butterfly. Very simple, easy to make butterfly uh, in the description box below. It was just a tutorial on YouTube. I did mention last week that his eyes are Cassandra at Craftably Ever After. It's her um, eye pattern, her tutorial for embroidery eyes, and the nose was already embroidered like that in the pattern. The pattern did use safety eyes, but the nose um, was embroidered. So that is the cat for the Mix and Match Challenge 2024. He doesn't have a name yet. My plan is to give him to my daughter, let her name him. She does have an orange cat named um, Bowie. So she might name him after Bowie. We'll see. And I have an idea she might ask me to make one that's like her gray and her black cat. Black on it would be fun. But anyway... Um, this is going to be a gift for her. He is going in our boxes, in the crate. He's going to take a trip on a boat across the Atlantic Ocean. And um, I will see him in three, four or so months. There. Real quickly for the cat, I wanted to share that his dungarees, his overalls are made out of this blue. It is called Royal Blue, 100% uh, cotton. It's the same thing that the cat is made out of. It's a South African uh, dyed yarn called Venice Colors. And the circles on his hat are also made out of the white colorway. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the butterfly was made out of my sock yarn for the sock that I uh, am working on, uh, my, my work in progress sock. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's all the yarn details. As I said before, in last week's video, I do talk more about the um, cat and the yarn that I used and the embroidery and all of that. Oh, and for his overalls, I did use what, um, the yarn called for because I'm uh, not making a stuffy and needing to stuff them. And so I, I used a 4.0, yeah, 4.0 millimeter hook to make his overalls and to make the circles for the spots on his mushroom hat. There you go. So those are my finished projects. Let's move on to our whips. All right, I have three works in progress. Two I am not showing you because it is part of the hashtag hooking up with books, which ends on the 15th of May. And so that will be coming out around that time when I get back to the States. I'm still working on them. Um, 
I think it was two videos ago that I talked about the yarn I'm using and showed in its Red Heart Unforgettable in the Candied colorway. Um, but let me get to the whip I am going to show you and busy working on. So I'm going to show you this. Uh, so, like my husband's sock, I had one of my socks done, and now I've started working on the second one. But I'm going to show you the first one. So, you can see that I have gotten the first one done, my stitch markers counting all the rows. This is the Crazy Sock Lady's Morning Coffee Sock Pattern. It's really fun little broken rib pattern. I really like it. I think it's beautiful. It's got some texture uh, to it. So you work the pattern around the leg and then when you get to the foot, it's just on the top of the foot with the stocking net on the bottom. And yeah, so uh, I cast on for my socks, whether it's her vanilla sock or this one, I cast on 60 stitches for me, which is actually not in her pattern. Uh, and for this pattern, so it is uh, a four stitch repeat on each row and a six round or on each round and a six round repeat. And 60 is divisible by four. So I am able to do um, a round and get uh, or finish the repeat, finish the four stitches around on each row with a 60 round um, uh, cast on, stitch cast on. But with the foot, when, it, when we only do half of the foot, then I ran into some problems trying to figure out because half of 60 is 30, which is not divisible by four. But I decided in the end just to knit the four stitches, four stitches, four stitches, and then the last would just have two of that four stitch repeat. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think you can really tell that... Uh, the pattern does something funny, doesn't end right, isn't symmetrical or anything like that. Plus the fact this part will be in shoes most of the time. And so uh, I just went ahead and uh, did 28 divisible is divisible by four. So seven repeats of the four stitches and then just the next two uh, and then went straight into the stocking net um, on the foot. So yeah, so I do, as I said, for my socks, I do a, a 60 stitch cast on. This one I did the two by two ribbing. It's just my favorite. I think maybe the next pattern I do, if it's not the vanilla sock, the next um, like decorative pattern that I do, I'll, I might try the um, the rib that comes with the pattern, but this one I just did two by two ribbing for 20. I do 20 rounds. I do, uh, I normally do 60 for vanilla sock, but I did an extra. This one actually has 66. Uh, so I, um, did 11 repeats of the pattern. Heel flap, heel turn, and picking up the stitches and then toe decreases. I am a size five in the US, not quite a three. Um, I used to be able to wear a size three when we first moved to South Africa, but they've gotten bigger and they actually, most of them don't fit me anymore. And so I'm not really even a size three in uh, Europe or England or in South Africa. So. Um, but yeah, so that is, that was the first one. And this is, that's why I showed you the sock because this is my progress so far. I have just gotten 
the uh, ribbing started. I think I've done 11 or 12. I need to put my um, stitch marker counter in it, but usually uh, after, I usually wait till row 11 to put my light bulb marker in. These little um, stoppers, I got somewhere on our trip in Europe and purposely bought two different colors. I uh, thought they were quite cute. I bought several um, little needle stoppers, needle minders. So yeah, so this colorway, again, this is my Yarnable subscription. Uh, I heard recently from the Crazy Sock Lady that they're open again for new subscriptions, but if not, please get on the waiting list. Uh, it's a great subscription, lots of wonderful extras, um, but this is, I'm thinking it's from 2023, just not sure which month, and the colorway is... Um, raspberry cream and it's so pretty and I didn't tell you her uh, fingering sock weight is 85 called plush sock it's 85 superwash merino 15% uh, nylon and yeah most of my 2024 yarn is in the US when we were there visiting I, I didn't have room in my suitcase and I knew we would be coming back for a visit uh, because of my husband's parents and knew that we uh, would be coming back. And also we had planned our furlough um, in November, so knew I'd definitely be back then. Uh, and so, yeah, so a lot of my 2024 yarn uh, from Yarnable subscription box is still in the U.S., which means... Even if things are boxed up, I can still cast on more socks um, while I'm waiting for our crate to get to the U.S. So that is the one work in progress. I am taking the other two with me. Um, this one and another one will go in my suitcase. Uh, just the way flights work, we leave late at night, people turn off the lights because they want to sleep, especially after eating. I'll probably sleep that first flight, most of it, or watch movies and not get a lot of uh, crafting done. Uh, I hate turning the light on and interrupt, you know, waking people up. Uh, and so uh, I'm taking one project with me. It is a crochet project, which is very easy uh, to take because I just put my hook in my pen pencil case and just take the yarn um, that's got the project on it uh, in my carry-on. And so I haven't had any problems. It is actually uh, not allowed in South Africa going through their security to take knitting needles. Uh, but I, I'm sure there's a way around it, especially if they're wooden needles, but I don't want to chance losing my chow goo needles. So I am not, they're going to be packed in the suitcase. So, uh, yeah, we can now move on to plans. So just really quick, because I mentioned it in my previous video from last week that I am taking some yarn in my suitcase uh, for a couple of different wearable projects, actually three wearable projects, and um, but not getting started on those till we actually get to the U.S. And as I said, I will have yarn from my Yarnable subscription there, and so I'll have plenty of things to do, to work on, and to show you once we get to the U.S. Uh, speaking of, we are packing everything. The movers are coming next week, and so there will not be a video next week. I think with just everything being um, them here packing boxes that... So the nice thing is whatever I don't get packed, they will pack. And especially the breakables like dishes and some other things that I have that I'm afraid because I'm not a professional packer. I'm afraid to pack them um, that they might get broken. The movers will do that for us. So with all of the, with them packing and all of that going on and then getting loaded onto the truck, 
um, I'm just not going to plan on a video next week. But we land in the U.S. on Sunday, May 5th. It'll be late. Well, depending on where you are in the world, it could be early May 6th. Um, but in the U.S., when I land, it will be Sunday, May 5th. So I will be able to put out a video that week and show you the things uh, that I have worked on, hopefully finished, and um, maybe even by that time have cast on some of those wearable projects that I plan on doing. And I do plan on putting a video out of uh, a wearable series that I will be doing also uh, in the near future. So look for those, but sorry, I just don't think I can get a video out next week. All right, I think that is everything, and um, yeah, so let's move on to our Bible study. All right, I had every intention of skipping this part of Luke because it is such a well-known portion of scripture. But as I was reading in Luke chapter 15, I couldn't pass it by. And it is well-known, but I want to look at it from a different perspective. So Luke chapter 15, it is verses 11 to 32. Uh, my Bible, I'm using the Christian Standard Bible, it is called the Parable of the Lost Son. Some versions call it the Prodigal Son. Uh, it is familiar, but uh, as I said, I want to share my thoughts and um, I think what God has spoken to me uh, from a little bit different perspective. So let me read those and I will put uh, the words on the screen as I read them. Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. He also said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a different, distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he'd spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food? And here I am dying of hunger. I'll get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers." So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told the servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fattened calf and slaughter it and let's celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. As he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants questioning what these things meant. Your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he is in back safe and sound. Then he became angry and didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, Look, I have been slaving many years for you. I have never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Son, he said to him, you are always with me 
and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So there is so much in that story. But I want to um, look at it uh, when we get to the question of what does it say about people to look at the older brother. Um, Why? Because I have always considered myself like the older brother in the story. I grew up in church. I knew all the Bible stories. I knew about Jesus. Um, I believed what I heard. In fact, even in grade nine, I went through some time of doubting but and wrestled with, do I really believe what I have been taught growing up in church? And came to the conclusion for myself that yes, I believe. I believe everything about Jesus, that he was God's son. He was God, Emmanuel, God with us, sent down, lived a perfect life, died so that um, I could be forgiven and in heaven. I really didn't understand relationship and what that meant till several years later as I've just been in God's word learning more about him, uh, grew then in relationship, understanding he is my good, good father and who loves me dearly. And it changed my life, my view of Christianity is what it means is that I am a Christ follower, a disciple. So, um, yeah, that really uh, has made such a huge difference in my life. Um, But uh, all that to say, that's why I want to look a little bit closer at the older son. Personally, uh, if I was to title it, I would call this portion of Scripture, this parable, the lost sons. Because I believe the older son was just as lost as the younger son. But let's look. What does this passage say about God? Well, obviously God is the creator. He owns everything and he is generous with what he has. And he loves unconditionally. The son came to him and said, I want my stuff. I want my things. I want what's mine my inheritance, and the father gave it to him. He was generous. He was loving, unconditionally, loved him deeply. I think the father in the story longed for his son, the prodigal son, but maybe even as well the older brother, to turn and come back towards him. He wanted a relationship with his sons. Um, But he didn't use force. When his son took all his things, gathered all his things and left, the father didn't tie him down and force him to stay. And he celebrates when we turn back to him. God loves his children deeply. And he waits patiently for all. All of the people he created, every one of us, to come to him. He's waiting patiently, hoping that we won't deny him until the end, that we will turn and become part of the family of God, become his children. And uh, so it tells me a lot just about Uh, the love the father has. It says when he saw the younger son from far off, he had compassion. He was wanting him to come back. Uh, But what about the older son? The older son, I think, was full of anger. I think he was angry from the very beginning that this younger son went off with everything. Maybe he was angry or jealous that he couldn't run off. He was the responsible one that would stay and work the land. But I think he also um, stewed over it. So at the end of the passage, when he said he found out the younger brother had come back and they were throwing a party, he got angry. I think that anger was just stewing all these years and had turned into bitterness. 
So uh, the part that says when this younger son asked for his part of the inheritance, it says in the, in the ESV that, and the New Living Translation, they use the term divided. The CSB says he distributed which tells me whether it's divided or distributed, that the father actually gave both sons their inheritance, which is everything he owns. The older son back then got more, I think got like two thirds and the younger got the, a third, but he gave everything to both sons. And I think the older son lived as if it was still the father's as if he weren't actually a son. I mean, he actually told the father, I have been slaving all these years for you. He was working to earn maybe his inheritance. Maybe he didn't come to grasp that what the, when the father gave the younger son his part, he also gave the older son, he gave him my, my part, you know, that part. Um, I'm thinking for the older son, but um, the older son had wealth, but he saw himself as a slave working for his part of the inheritance, maybe even working for the father to love him. Hey, I'm like I said, I'm the responsible one. I'm the one who stayed here. My father loves me more than the younger son because I'm the good one. I'm doing the work. And I'm obeying. He said, I've never disobeyed you, you know. So um, he could have been a little angry at the father too for letting the younger son have his inheritance and letting him go. But I believe uh, that, that he just didn't, maybe it's because I don't know that he had relationship. He knew he inherited, he knew the land was going to be his, but as I said, he didn't claim it when the father distributed the inheritance. He still felt he had to work, work for the inheritance, work to please his father, um, work to be loved more, maybe, by the father. I also believe the older brother knew that the younger brother came back. Maybe he hid out in the field working. I don't know. But I just, how do you not hear a father shouting excitedly when, the, when he sees the younger son, his younger brother from far off? How do you not see or how, how can you miss all the goings on with the bringing out the robe and the ring and the sandals and throwing the big party. But I think he was so angry, so hurt, he didn't want to be a part of it. So mad with his brother, he wouldn't even call him his brother. He said, your son to the father. And the father intentionally said, your brother. He also the older brother didn't go out looking for the younger brother. I mean, the father saw the younger brother from far off. Tells me that the father was continually looking for the son to return, but the older brother wasn't. There was just a lot of hurt and anger there on his part and working for the father to please him, to be loved by him. That was really unnecessary. And um, I, I, like I said, I feel like that maybe he worked so hard, there was no time being spent with the father in relationship. That relationship aspect was missing. And that's why I think he was just as lost as the younger brother. Both had separated themselves from the father. One by working to be good enough, but work taking over, maybe separating, and there's just not that relationship there. Uh, and the younger one obviously running away. So, 
how can I obey? How can, what does that tell me? If I really do identify myself as the older uh, brother in this story, what is God saying? And I think, first of all, he's saying, check my heart towards the lost. Do I really see them as lost, as with compassion, that they are not in relationship with God? that they are separated, still separated from him because of their pride and selfishness, um, because they haven't trusted in Jesus and been washed clean and forgiven. Uh, where Check my heart. And do I see them as lost and do I have compassion? And for those that are in the church that maybe are working for their inheritance, their salvation, they're working thinking they have to work to be good enough. I should be looking out for them and wanting to disciple and mentor and help them be in God's word to see that God loves. With All we have to do is believe in Jesus, ask for forgiveness, we don't have to keep working. We do because we love the Father for what He has done. But work as if the inheritance is yours because you want to take care of it because, because it was given by the Father and you appreciate it, not because you're working for His approval. And so really be, a, be cognizant of, of people in the church that may be thinking they have to work um, for salvation, for inheritance, for God's love. And also check my heart towards working. Am I motivated because I want people to think I'm good? Am I motivated to work because I want God to love me more? Or is it, is my working just out of a thankful heart for all God has done. And because I'm his child and I love him and want him to be pleased and bring him joy. Um, and so, yeah, so check my heart towards working. And am I really spending time uh, in God's word, not as work, not as duty, but to get to know him and to grow the intimacy between the father and and I. And so, yeah, that is kind of where I want to be and where I want to strive to be and what I want my heart uh, to be going towards. And would love to know um, what brother do you identify with in this passage? Uh, as I had said, I've identified with the older brother. Love to know uh, what brother you identify with and why and what are you working on and um, yeah how has God spoken to you through the story of the prodigal sons or the lost sons thank you for joining me if you've stayed this long through Bible study I hope it was a blessing for you let me close in a quick prayer Lord thank you for this day thank you for your word to us thank you for this parable that Jesus told, uh, telling it to disciples, to the people that were following him, and to the Pharisees. Lord, I thank you. I pray that you would give us ears to hear what you are saying to us and hearts to um, be obedient and draw closer to you. And uh, yeah, thank you. And I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate thumbs up. Uh, if you're new and you've stuck it out this long, I would love it if you would think about subscribing and so that you can be notified when the next videos come out. As a reminder, there will be a Monday devotion next week, but not um, a crafting, a flourish creative, creatively. I'm still practicing. A Flourish Creatively video next week. But we'll see you in two weeks. Have a great day. Bye-bye, y'all.